Good evening and welcome to News Center. I'm Alexis Matthews. And I'm Chelsea Armstrong. This is your news for October 31st, 2013. MSU's Space Science Center took part in, part in an attempt to break a world record. Trailblazers Ji Hoon Ha has more. The attempt to do the first ever moon bounce contact on 77 gigahertz from Moscow in uh, Russia to Moorhead in the United States, Moorhead, Kentucky, was attempted on this past weekend, the 18th and 19th of October. And the attempt was not successful in that we were not able to hear the signals or observe the signals from the man in Moscow. Cell phones and such are around 1.8 or 2 gigahertz. Direct TV, dish satellite, that's uh, like uh, up on 14 gigahertz, down on 12. Police radar, 24 gigahertz, and also what, 30 some odd gigahertz. And a lot of trustful radio links are up in what, 30 gigahertz, I guess. But once you get past that, it's uh, really more uh, new frontier, I guess. You know, and it's it's actually the uh, an amateur band, and that's why we we picked it. The lowest, uh, the next lower amateur bands are 47 gigahertz where we've operated before. So this was the next logical step upwards. As we grow in our need for wireless communications bandwidth, more and more frequencies in the very high ranges, the millimeter ranges, are being activated. Right now people are looking at using 60 gigahertz. Automobile radar and communication systems are at 77. So this represents the uh, attempt to use these high frequencies for this type of work. One day communication to satellites may be done at these frequencies, and so they're breaking ground in techniques, technologies, methods, etc., of how to do this. Uh, I, I, you know, we did the first 24 gigahertz back in 2001, and we did the first 47 in 2005. And actually, a, another friend of mine here, Barry V. Four M A, was one of the the guys that was also on 47 gigahertz uh, moon bounce. And then once again, it's why do people climb Mount Everest? because it's there. So the technological challenge of doing this in our world is enormous. In fact, it was undreamed of 20 years ago, and now we've reached a point in technology where it becomes barely possible to try it. And so they're at the cutting edge of this sort of thing. To kick off homecoming last week, the Student Alumni Ambassadors hosted their annual Nearly Naked Mile. Trailblazer reporter Patrick Brumbach was there. All right, are you ready? All right, let's start now. Let's go. On your mark, get set, run! This year is the seventh annual Nearly Naked Mile, and basically it's just a coat drive that um, people donate coats, and the whole concept of it is for people to donate a coat and then go bold in the cold by taking off their jacket and um, just running in the cold, and it's really cold out this evening, so <laughs> it's really cold. And... Um, we got some runners here, and um, the coats go to um, the Round County Family Resource um, Family Center, and it goes for the um, less fortunate families here in Round County. I feel phenomenal. I've been, uh, this entire semester I've been going back to the gym, getting in shape, uh, doing all that, and it just feels amazing to finally be able to run in nearly nothing with the unicorn hood on and it be accepted and I won't get arrested for it. It feels amazing. The theater department here, uh, sponsored by Theta Alpha Phi, one of the groups that I'm representing tonight, uh, was selling all of their old and costumes that they don't have use for anymore. So I decided to snag this up for $5 and see what I could do with it. So I made a good choice. If I'm here next year, I definitely would love to be able to do this again. Uh, this is my third time doing this. I'm a senior, so it's been a blast every single year. Last Wednesday, the MSU Art Department hosted a bowl-a-thon in Claypool Young. News Center's Haley Murphy was there. We had two of them. This is our second one. It is for our event, which is going to be empty bowls, and basically we are throwing bowls on the wheel and hem belt for charity. So after we have thrown all the bowls and we've trimmed them and we've blazed them, hopefully we're get, our goal is around 400 bowls. So 
end result, we want to make around $4,000 because each bowl is going to be priced for $10 in an event called Empty Bowls. It's at the Folk Art Center on November 6th from 11.30 to 1. Basically what's going to happen is we're going to have a huge spread of all these different bowls. They're all going to look completely different. They're going to be filled with chili. So you're going to go and you're going to get a meal, but you also get a bowl to take home with you and you will know that you gave $10 to Round County Christmas. Kind of up and prepared. Like when we have our bowl of thons, people are kind of nervous because they don't want to show up, but actually no experience is required. If you have experience, that's really appreciated, but if you come in with no experience, we will teach you how to hand build and we'll teach you how to wheel throw. It's open to anyone in the community of all ages. As you can see, we've got some kids running around, we've got some older people, anyone is welcome to join. We do it every year. This year, like I said, it's for Round County Christmas, but in the past we have done other organizations that are, you know, foreign countries, just anywhere we can find the need. We'll be right back after the break for a look at weather with Nina Cottle and News Center Notices featuring Kendall Thornberry. And print. Oh, yeah. Steve, we've got a problem. We do. Art This needs a live studio audience, and I mean live on November 6th. That's right. How do they get in? Well, to guarantee a seat, email at msutv at mail.com. And when you do that, if you're one of the first 10 to send that email, you get your reserved seat in the studio audience on November 6th and a bag full of highly coveted Art This swag. That's right, folks. We need you. We need you. <laughs> Welcome back to News Center. I'm Nina Cottle. Don Young has the night off. Take a look at your current temperature for Moorhead is 64 degrees and it's currently raining outside. The record high temperature set back in 1971 was 81 degrees, so more of a summery day. Obviously not what's going on today. A low temperature of 21 degrees was set back in 1925, so thankfully it's not that cold for tonight for trick-or-treating, but you still want to be careful going out tonight with possible flash floods and even tornado warning and tor torrential rain. Take a look at your current, current temperatures across the Commonwealth. 62 in Covington, 62 in Frankfurt, 63 in Louisville, 64 in Lexington, 63 in Mount Sterling, 66 around Ashland, 66 in Richmond, 64 in Danville, 67 in London, and 64 in Somerset. Take a look at your current radar. You can see the storm coming in, and it'll continue to get worse throughout the night. So be careful trigger treating with thunderstorms and all the rain. Make sure you take an umbrella with you and stay warm. Look at your 24-hour planner. Earlier today, it was 63 and 64, kind of mid lower 60s. And as we go into the night, it'll keep getting cooler. Let's take it to New Center Notices. Hi and welcome to New Center Notices. Today I'm here with Kendall Thornberry and she is here to talk about the Delta Gamma Anchor Slam, is that right? Yes. Could you tell us a little bit about what Anchor Slam is? Um, Anchor Slam is an event that we do that we play basketball. It's a five on five tournament. We raise money for our philanthropy. Okay, so what is your philanthropy for? Um, it is called Service for Sight and we raise money and awareness for people that are visually impaired. And we also have another one that's um, with our 
joining forces, so we help um, armed forces with them who are visually impaired also. Okay, so how exactly do you get involved? If we, if we wanted to participate, how would you do that? Um, you need to have $30 per team. Anybody can be involved. You can have an independent team. We have a lot of our Greek life that get involved with it also. But we just like to have anybody that wants to be involved help come and help out. That sounds honestly like a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. We try to make it fun. <laughs> uh, how much is it to enter a team? Um, it is thirty dollars per team, and you so, need at least five people to do so that. So it's it's not that expensive. Like no. it's it's something that everybody could do. Exactly. So that, yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. If if you were to win, is there like a prize that you win? Um, you get a little certificate that says you win, and then you <laughs> also just get to brag about it to everybody else. So which that's is pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> which is always fun. Was definitely. Um, and as far as like. What other events have you done this year? Um, we had Anchor Splash, which is a way we raise money also for our philanthropy. And we do pool games, that sort of thing, kind of out in the water, just having fun. Um, we also have one that's in the spring. It's called Anchors in the Outfield, mm -hmm. and it's a little softball tournament that we do. Oh, wow. That, so you guys do a lot of different things right. then. Um, what, was the, what was Anchor Splash? Just a lot of, like... Just a lot of games in the pool. Games and, like, yes. summer stuff. Right. Okay. Well, uh... Is there anything besides the the one in the spring? Is there anything else in the future that you guys have planned? Um, we have gotten a lot more involved with the vision walk that we did. Um, we did that recently also, and I'm, we're trying to get a lot more involved, kind of like nationally, with helping other people with their vision ideas also. Anything else? Like any other kinds of people that you're you're thinking about helping? Um, we want to get involved with, there's a couple people on campus that are visually impaired and we're trying our best to get involved with them also and help in any way that we can. Okay, well, I mean, that, that's really awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and when is this, um, when is the Anchor Slam? And it is going to be this week. It's going to be November 7th, Thursday. Okay, Thursday. Mm -hmm. And where is it? It's going to be in Laughlin Gym. It's 5.30 for registration and then 6 to start the event. Okay, so you don't have to be registered, like, really far in advance. It's just no. like you show up with your team and, mm -hmm. and you can go ahead. And, well, that, that mm -hmm. sounds like a lot of fun. So. Yes. Sounds like definitely something to get involved with, of for sure. Of course. <laughs> That's all the time we have. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Uh, we'll be right back after the break with an extended look at weather with Nina Cottle and Sarah Burkhart with Eagle Athletics. Steve, we've got a problem. We do. Art This needs a live studio audience, and I mean live, on November 6th. That's right. How do they get in? Well, to guarantee a seat, email at msutv at mail.com. And when you do that, if you're one of the first 10 to send that email, you get your reserved seat in the studio audience on November 6th and a bag full of highly coveted Art This swag. That's right, folks. We need you. We need you. Yo, why you looking at bags, bro? What you need is a chick magnet. You put me in the room and boom! Chicks. That's what I'm talking about! Welcome back to News Center. Take a look at your current temperatures. 62 in Covington, 62 in Frankfurt, 63 in Louisville, 64 in Lexington, 63 in Mount Sterling, 66 in Ashland, 66 in Richmond, 64 in Danville, 64 in Somerset, 67 in London, and 65 in Jackson. Currently in Moorhead, it's 64 degrees, cold and cloudy with a humidity of 75% and wind gusts up to 24 miles per hour. 
which actually in the, in the central part of Kentucky already, they've seen up to 40 to 45 miles per hour wind gusts. So this is kind of low for us here, but as the night goes on, it could increase. Check out your current radar with the storm that's been coming in. It'll continue to come in through the night and you can kind of see that we're in the, in the green, so it's raining. And there's also going to be some potential for tornadoes and flash floods as the night goes on. Take a look at your radar across the country. You can see the storm coming in. And with that storm, you can see the cloud coverage is going right along with it. Tonight, you'll see some scattered showers with a low of 52, and the sun will set around 642 tonight. Tomorrow, it's going to be a nicer day, but lower temperatures, so it's still going to be cold, but the sun should be coming out with the sunrise at 8.01 a.m. Take a look at your seven-day forecast. Thursday, today, we have 60, high of 65, a low of 53, Friday, high of 59 with a 30% chance of rain and a low of 50. Saturday, we'll have a high of 52 with a 40% chance of rain and going into the night, we'll see lows of 30 degrees. Also remember to set your clock back an hour this weekend. Sunday, you'll have a high of 50 and the sun will start to peak back out again, but it'll still be cloudy with a low of 34 degrees. Monday, you'll see a high of 54 degrees with the sun again peaking back out a little bit cloudy, but not supposed to be any rain. A low of 43 degrees going into Tuesday. Tuesday morning, you'll see a high of 60 degrees with a 30% chance of rain. With a low of 45 degrees and a high 62 on Wednesday and 40% chance of rain. Now let's take it to Eagle Athletics. Your home for the Moorhead State Eagles, this is New Center Sports. Both the men's and women's basketball teams begin their seasons this weekend. The Lady Eagles have an exhibition game against NAIA opponent Kentucky Christian. Tip-off is set for 5.15 p.m. at Johnson Arena. The men's team will begin exhibition play Saturday in Johnson Arena when they take on St. Catherine College. As always, admission is free for MSU students with a valid ID. The Moorhead State Cross Country Program will host the Ohio Valley Conference Championships this Saturday at Eagle Trace Golf Course. Head coach Brent Erickson says they are excited to be hosting the OVC Championship for the first time since 2002. This is only the fifth time since 1980 that Moorhead State has served as the host of the races. The men's 8K race is set for 10.45 a.m. The women's race 5K is scheduled to kick off at 11.45 a.m. Live results will be available on msueagles.com and ovcsports.com. There is no charge for admission. Moorhead State soccer team last reached the NCAA tournament three years ago, but lost to West Virginia in the opening round. New center's Mike Williams caught up with junior forward Jade Flory, who believes this year MSU could take it to the next level. They made a good run at it, but ended up losing first round. But I think for us, with us having that hard schedule, I think if we can get into the NCAA, I think we can be an underdog that gets the upset games. So that's what I'm hoping for. Flory has been an important part of this year's squad, having won the OVC Player of the Week award three times. And for me, winning it was awesome. It was one of the greatest wins in the, in the world to me. Like That's such a great honor to have gotten that. But that's not enough, says Flory. She says the Eagles have their eyes on a much bigger prize. Well, obviously, the big one was winning the OVC. That was that came first to me. It didn't matter how we got it. That's what I want so that we can get a chance to go to the NCAA. And then for me personally, I really just wanted to have a good year for goals. I really wanted to come out and break the single season record. I'm five off from it, but... I mean, still got another game and some playoffs, so hopefully I can get that. And then just getting the wins is honestly the most important thing to me. That tough out-of-conference schedule might be just what MSU needs. It was a rough start for us, but I also think it was a good start for us. I think the level of competition that we played outside of conference with Ohio State, West Virginia, St. Francis, every, all three of those teams were top 25 when we played them. And... I think we held our own against every single one. We nearly beat 
uh, Ohio State and St. Francis. So for me, I think it was the best thing for us. I think it prepared us for conference, and I think that's why we're doing so well in conference. Jade Flory and the rest of the Lady Eagles will face Eastern Kentucky University at home this Friday night for their regular season finale. And now for New Center's famous sports trivia. In what year did MSU join the Ohio Valley Conference? A. 1962, B. 1948, C. 1951, or D. 1951? Well, I'm not really sure, but if I had to guess, I'd, I'd probably go with 1942. I think I'm going to go with 1951. Uh, I'm going to go with 1941. Actually, it was B, 1948. Um, MSU is one of the first six founding schools to be a part of the AVC. There are now 12 in the conference, and that's the most in their history. We'll be right back after the break. Steve, we've got a problem. We do. Art This needs a live studio audience, and I mean live on November 6th. That's right. How do they get in? Well, to guarantee a seat, email at msutv at mail.com. And when you do that, if you're one of the first 10 to send that email, you get your reserved seat in the studio audience on November 6th and a bag full of highly coveted Art This swag. That's right, folks. We need you. We need you. <laughs> The Kentucky Folk Arts Center is home to a new exhibit featuring Appalachia. New Center stopped by to see what it was all about. This exhibition, Rough Road, is a collection of photographs that were taken in the, the mid-1970s as part of a large NEA-funded project. Uh, the pho photographers involved were uh, Ted Wathen, Bob Howard and Bill Burke. They were three young photographers. And as part of the project, they traveled all across the state of Kentucky and took uh, photographs in every single county. This exhibition is a selection of um, 50 photographs primarily taken in eastern Kentucky. The project lasted from 1975 until 1977. It was conceived of to celebrate the American bicentennial. What they did was want to document the life and culture and society uh, of Kentucky in the mid-1970s. And looking at these exhibitions today, uh, people can see how the ways in which life has changed over the past 40 years and the ways in which it hasn't. They opened the exhibition, a version of the exhibition, at the Fraser Museum in Louisville uh, last year. They hope it will travel to other venues, but they're not sure right now. The photographers also hope that they can revisit the sites where a lot of the photographs were taken and shoot those sites now uh, as part of a future uh, part of the project. And it's really um, an important document. You know, the, this sort of photography, uh, the most famous ones are the old WPA photos uh, that were taken in the 1930s. And, and projects like this, uh, documentary photographs, always owe something to those earlier projects. 
Um, but this is, uh, this is very unique um, and, and it's fascinating to, to see for those of us who are old enough to remember what things were like during that period and for those of us who aren't old enough. Uh, we can get a glimpse into what life was like in Kentucky 40 years ago. The Rough Road exhibition will be on display until late December, and admission to the Kentucky Folk Arts Center is always free. The annual homecoming parade was held last Thursday with many locals and officials and organizations participating in the event. Among those in the parade were President Wayne Andrews and his wife Sue, along with head football coach Rob Tenure and his family. Student organizations participated in the parade as a part of the annual float building contest. The winners of the contest were announced during halftime of Saturday's game, with FFA winning first place for their True Grit themed float. Kappa Delta, Theta Chi, and the BCM winning second place for their Titanic themed float, and Chi Omega along with Pi Kappa Alpha winning third place for their Willy Wonka themed float. Despite cold temperatures and the threat of rain, the parade drew a large crowd to downtown Moorhead. State, Moorhead State participates in the stepping competition. Brianna Perry has more on the story. During homecoming week, MSU hosted the NPHC Step Show, where fraternities and sorority chapters from all over Kentucky participated. There were a total of five groups that competed. Host of the competition, Demetrius McDog Wheeler, tells News Center more about this. Well, basically, we get uh, Greek organizations to come out here and uh, perform a 10-minute to 15-minute showcase of stepping, and they get judged by uh, different categories like enthusiasm, uh, intro of the step, and you know, just different categories like that. And they get money to go to their organization so they can uh, use that money for service projects. Uh, the brothers of uh, Alpha Phi Alpha, the brothers of Phi Beta Sigma, the brothers of Iota Phi Theta, the sisters of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorp Incorporated, and uh, Ada Road Chapter of uh, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated here on the campus of Moya State. Uh, basically, I hope they gain uh, a, a different uh, look on uh, college life and uh, Greek life. And maybe we had a good turnout today, so hopefully they'll they come and support and uh, next year and also be a part of any sorority and fraternity on campus. Reporting for News Center, I'm Brianna Perry. Last night at the Claypool Young Art Building, gallery director Jennifer Rice and the art department teamed up with Alliance for the annual Halloween costume contest. Get multiple shots. Well, we have been doing the costume contest uh, in the art and design department for about eight to ten years now, and so it's become an annual tradition where uh, basically we have students come from across campus and dress up, and it's just a fun um, sort of cross campus event where. Um, you get to see every year a host of different costumes. Um, this year, Duck Dynasty seems to be particularly, you know, popular. So it's a good, I think, for me, indicator of pop culture. Uh, Alliance is the LGBT community on campus. Um, we're just there for support and to help people learn about the LGBT. We say alphabet community now because it's a lot more than LGBT now, <laughs> uh, but just for support and awareness mainly. First time judge Karen Taylor explains what she's looking for in a contestant's costume. Um, I guess just a lot of originality. This is an amazing competition because there are so many art students, obviously. Um, so I think originality and creativity, definitely. Austin Hammond's second place winner spent hours constructing his Halo Force Spartan costume. Um, I got a $50 gift card to the University Bookstore. And um, what I probably plan on doing with it, my mom's kind of been bugging me about getting her a license plate because she's a proud mom of a Moorhead student. So um, I'll probably get her one of those if I can find them. On behalf of Nina Caudle with Weather, Sarah Burkhart with Sports, and the rest of the News Center team, I'm Alexis Matthews. And I'm Chelsea Armstrong. Have a great evening. <laughs>
professional harp players, and TV show hosts. If I didn't know better, I'd swear Steve was doing a commercial for our first sponsor. That's right. Lee Oscar Harmonica is the sponsor for Art This. And one of the things with Lee Oscar folks, if you're curious in playing harmonicas, each Lee Oscar Harmonica comes with a unique quick guide to inform you to how to play harmonicas with various styles of music. All I can say is, Art This. Art Thanks, this. Lee. Thanks, Lee. <laughs> Conveniently located on the bottom floor of ADUCT, the Moorhead State University Bookstore has everything you need and more. Steve, we've got a problem. We do. Art This needs a live studio audience, and I mean live on November 6th. That's right. How do they get in? Well, to guarantee a seat, email at msutv at mail.com. And when you do that, if you're one of the first ten to send that email, you get your reserved seat in the studio audience on November 6th and a bag full of highly coveted Art This swag. That's right, folks. We need you. We need you.